Hey everybody, I wanted to do a quick little tutorial on uh, Blender EV and some of the tune shading and uh, different things that have been coming out recently. So this is Blender 2.8 and here we go. Uh, I modeled this little scene right here with a espresso pot and there's some smoke coming out of the top and a cup and it goes around like this and the coffee comes out and pours into the little cup. Nothing too fancy, but I just rendered this out for my Instagram and I uh, was just playing around with some different settings. So let's get into making the shaders. Go over here to our shader editor and we'll start with this coffee pot right here. So we'll add a new material and we'll get rid of this principled shader and instead we will uh, shift A and get a diffuse shader and then we will convert that to RGB and then we will get a color ramp I'll plug the color from the shader to RGB into the color ramp and now there's a few different ways you can go about doing this but we need first to either put another diffuse or emission shader over here in order to connect this to our surface. Now we have this material connected to our surface and it is set in linear right now. And basically what that means is that it will give you a gradient like you're seeing here. Um, and you can bring these values together and you can bring them really close together to get that really sharp uh, tune or cell shading but you can also set it to constant and you will just get constant values between these two which is nice if you want to add a like a another value like we say we add like a gray in here and then we have just kind of a, a tritone um, going on in the shading it can be nice uh, depending on what you're going for, but I kind of like the the linear usually, and I, I, I'll just have two colors in here, and uh, what we'll do is just set one of these to kind of a, I don't know, just a bluish gray color. Um, get it somewhere that I like it. Maybe a little lighter. Then I'm going to bring this very close over here and just set this to gray. And I'm still picking up a lot of orange from the background. So let's try the emission shader instead and just see how that looks. Okay, that's giving me much closer to what I want. So I'll do this kind of blue gray look for the metal. And then really quickly, I want the handle of my, uh, my coffee pot over here to be black. So I'm just gonna select all of these vertices and we'll go in here. We will add a new material and we will assign it right here. And we will just make this black. All right, so, oh, missed a few. And assign. Then I also want this little knob up here to share that same black material. All right, so we have a little espresso pot now with a, a tune shader on it. We'll do something similar for the cup. And actually what I will do is I will just find my tune shader. I'll hit this little two right here to split it up so it's its own shader. And we will just change the coloring on this a little bit. And I think I'm just gonna make it shadow a little darker. Maybe I need to bring it, ah, there we go. Just need to bring those values over. That Sometimes that happens depending on 
probably because this is a little closer to my light source. Uh, you have to mess around with where the shadow is appearing. Um, and then we will go back into my camera view here. All right, and then we will also do this for our smoke or steam, I guess. Select that, go back to Shader Editor, we grab the same material, hit two, and I'm just going to make this a little darker because I want my smoke a little darker. Uh, sorry, I keep saying smoke, I mean steam. <laughs> it's, it's water boiling, it's steam. And I'm not really liking how that's looking, so let's again move these values because of how uh, where it is in relation to my light source. And I think that's looking a little better. And I did a similar thing uh, with this coffee. It's just, you know, uh, a mix of a light brown and a darker brown, as you can see here. And now, uh, if you want to, you can render this out and you can post it to Instagram or wherever you like. Uh, the way that I did this for Instagram was actually, uh, I did it at a uh, 24 frames per second, but I gave it a five frame step. And then I uh, turned it into uh, an animated image, uh, GIF or GIF or however you say it. And <laughs> I gave it kind of a choppy cartoon feel that I can show you. So here is the image that I created in the end. And next what I'll show you is how I got these little grease pencil lines to uh, go on top of my mug and my coffee pot. So what I did to get the grease pencil line is I came in and I shift A and we get a new grease pencil blank. So we are now using grease pencil and we'll go into draw. And then uh, I want my stroke placement. I think by default it's on origin, but I actually want it on surface. So when I come out here, and I go and just uh, left click and start drawing. Grease Pencil recognizes my surface and will now conform to my surface. And so all I did is I went in here and I just kind of gave it some scribbly little lines. And I don't know like that. And just gave it some scribbly little lines along these protruding points. on my coffee pot. Every once in a while you'll see this happen where it goes, whoa, crazy like that. And uh, you can just undo. And sometimes uh, you can grab the grease pencil layer and you can just move it back. A lot of times it will still form correctly to the surface and then you just can uh, move it, you know, in this case along your X axis to bring it back to the front of your object. And the cool thing is you can also just go over to this object. You don't have to do anything else to uh, tell your grease pencil layer that you uh, want to switch to a different object to draw on top of a different object. You can just go right on over and you can start drawing. And this isn't, you know, the cleanest drawing or anything. I'm just kind of trying to demonstrate about what I did. And like I said, I, I moved it around a little bit. And you can make it uh, look however you want. And the other thing that I did is I went into my object mode and I found the grease pencil layer, which uh, surprisingly they can be a little difficult to find exactly where they are for me. Sometimes I have to go over here. There we go. So <laughs> 
it placed it way back here in my scene, uh, probably because my cursor was back there. And then what I did was I selected that. Um, this is my parent actually for moving my coffee pot just because the way I wanted it to rotate, I made it like that. And then you can uh, select that, shift select, Oops. grease pencil, oh, the plane, and then you can do control P, parent, object, then I just grab my grease pencil and you can see in the animation that I showed you that it was a little scaled up. I just kind of scaled it up slightly and moved it up a little bit. So it just kind of looked like a little wireframe around it, just a little loose drawing. And now uh, when my, okay, that didn't work. I almost need to select this and then that. And again, parent it. Let's see if that works. There we go. And it's also moving my other grease pencil there. Great. We actually want to do another grease pencil layer blank if you want to create the separate drawing. I should have known that. I don't know why I said you could stand the same <laughs> same layer for different objects. I should not have said that. There we go. Just have a little coffee animation. We will clean up a grease pencil. 